today is actually week nine, I'm sorry, where we're going to go over um, the tools um, and the, the pipelines themselves that you can use for analyzing your viral data sets. Um, last week, we um, actually here I am. Uh, last week, we actually went through all of the tools. And this week, uh, we're actually going to go over uh, each of the pipelines. Now, these are the two major pipelines we're going to be working with. So there's a the viral ecogenomics pipeline set up on Cyverse, as well as KBase. So anyone here, um, at least today, we are going to be able to process your actual data sets if you would like. Um, I will try to go over these um, relatively quickly, um, just because two hours wouldn't be enough to really give the kind of care and attention to detail um, that each of these would deserve. And so since last week, we went through generally the major steps and why you would um, use each of them or uh, yeah, run each of those steps. Uh, I don't have to go into as, as much detail. Um, so we do have more tools and functionality available on Cyverse. And let me just this page. So um, on Cyverse, we have a protocols.io. I will link all three links here in the chat momentarily, um, or you can quickly type them out. I believe they were put on the microbiome informatics webinar uh, website that you all have access to um, a little earlier today. And you can just go and navigate to that page and click on them. And they should have you know, everything in front of you. Um, that you would need. Um, so the protocol that's on Cyverse um, is basically handled through protocols.io simply because Cyverse still doesn't have a good mechanism for um, protocol use or at least uh, pipeline use. They do have some guides and checklists and stuff like that, but nothing um, as uh, integrated, kind of built into the infrastructure as KBase has. And so uh, for this one, we'll use the protocols.io link here. Uh, the data set is the Ocean Sampling Day data set uh, from 2014. Um, no particular reason I've used this over any other one, uh, mainly because uh, it was quick, easy. Uh, it's a very small data set. Um, I think it's got like hundreds of megabytes, megabases of data, so it can be assembled and processed very quickly. And on um, something like Cyverse, um, I didn't really want to burden the system with, you know, potentially at one point, you know, 200 people all suddenly running a 20, 50 gigabyte data set and um, Cyverse complaining to the guy that's running the webinar. Um, so in this um, protocol, you'll download data from SRA, you'll run Trimomatic. Uh, I could make sure I double check this, uh, run metaspades on that, cluster genomes, Viasota 1, uh, and then uh, Viasota 1, if you remember, um, identifies viruses, vcontact 2 to give you some uh, taxonomic context, and then read to ref mapper, um, which is um, a tool used to uh, read map. And that would give you relative abundances of your particular viruses that you've identified across, you know, however many samples you want to um, throw in there. On KBase, um, I was taking a different approach. Uh, so instead of the smaller ocean sampling day data set, I actually wanted to um, see what KBase could handle. And in Instead, I took a Terra Oceans data set that's considerably larger. Um, I think I've got the stats somewhere. Um, but it is, it's, um, there are two Paradent files that are about 11 gigabytes each. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of data in that data set. Um, likewise, with Cyverse, you'll download from the SRA. Uh, you'll run Shrimomatic on that, uh, Metaspades, Viasota 1, and vcontact2. Um, I think for KBase, um, 
one of the reasons, that, oh, I should say, one of the reasons we don't have nearly as many apps in KBS, KBase as we do in Cyverse is simply because it takes a lot longer for the developer to integrate apps in KBase. And um, for example, Verse Order 2 has only recently come out. And so we do have Verse Order 2 on Cyverse. Um, I just didn't uh, decide to throw it in here. It does work a little bit better than Verse Order 1, but it is more complicated to use. And so for the purpose of this you know, webinar, we don't have enough time to work through the intricacies. And so I decided to leave it off. Um, Vue sort of 2 does have protocols on protocols.io um, that I will just touch on in one second here. Um, but most people can follow instructions. And so if you uh, go to protocols.io, you can just simply uh, substitute the kind of step for Vue sort of 1 with Vue sort of 2. Um, the guide is actually very, very good. Uh, it's just simply uh, pretty involved. Um, and so, yes, the last thing I wanted to mention here um, was OSC. Um, I do have a entire viral ecogenomics pipeline available on um, the Maverick Informatics uh, website. Um, I could probably try to post that elsewhere, um, but for the moment I will now, I think stop, stop the show. Yes, stop the show. Um, for those of you who haven't, oops, let's go to Zoom. By Zoom, I'm looking for Zoom window. Zoom window, where are you? Ah, here we go. Chat. Attendees. Okay. Yeah, when you're screen sharing, it doesn't. Uh, Give that, and then Maverick Informatics. And I will go to these in just a second. Okay, so briefly browsing, let's start at the protocols.io. So if you go to the first one, this, um, actually I can click on it right now. I just clicked on it and it opens up the exact same page. Perfect, it's the internet. Um, so the first one is processing of our metagenome using iVirus. Um, that's basically using Cyverse. Um, the next one is Kbase. Let's see, this is this narrative that I just opened up. Um, you can access this through um, this particular link here, or you can log into Kbase itself. Uh, let's see. Go down the options, go down. Yes, you could actually log into kbase.us. Oh, come on. It's hard because of all the top icons are hidden for me. Okay. So this is the one we're going to use, not the new cool one. Um, mainly because I'm still using some alpha and beta apps in that one and don't want people to uh, not have access to some of them. And so, um, as you can see, you can go to narratives. These will be under the public narratives and it'll be viral analysis end to end. Um, it says it is public here. Um, I have gone through quite a few versions. I'm sorry if I'm moving things around the, I'm sure you can see it. Um, the screen sharing thing eats up my, real estate. Um, there has been 85 versions of this. Um, so yeah, not to belabor the point, if you click on that, it will actually open this narrative in Kbase for you. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay. Sorry for the delay. Okay. So this is what I showed you last week. Um, I think I had some more screenshots. Actually, I had it opened. Um, to kind of navigate through and tell you that this is the data section, the apps and all of this. Um, okay, and then the final piece, go back to what I put in the chat, Maverick Informatics. Now there's no real good way to kind of um, 
have like a OSC. I have stuff on GitHub. This is technically on Bitbucket. Um, but the Maverick Informatics website, so if you just type in Maverick Informatics, you can still see here, um, read the docs.io. Um, it will have basically this is um, the microbial and viral ecology research in Columbus. Um, it's basically the lab efforts from the Sullivan and Rich Labs here at OSU. Um, it is basically a e-micro website um, that has kind of morphed into um, showing or having users on OSC or OSU and kind of sort of the general public um, come here as a resource. Um, we go through, in fact, Sharif um, contributed to this greatly. Um, it's got kind of the some of the course information. We'll update this every year as it goes on. Um, Unix Linux introduction, um, OSC. A lot of this is um, kind of our take on the OSC help, help uh, pages. Um, it's got some information on Chime, building modules and tools. I don't want to bore you with all that. Um, all the eco, almost all the eco micro tools that we've talked about over the webinar series um, is available here. Um, how to run tools in OSC. And then really right here, we should go down is the end-to-end -end processing of a viral metagenome. And um, I know I'm jumping around a lot. I will circle back to Cyverse. Um, actually, I'll go back, uh, talk to Kbase because that has a, a nice overview of everything that we'll be doing. Um, and so this end-to-end -end processing is like the end-to-end -end processing that I have of a microbial metagenome. Um, I do have copy and pasted um, various sections, but clearly, um, as we've discussed last week, many of the tools that you use to process both viral and microbial metagenomes are the same. You're still going to use like trimmatic or uh, trimming step, cleanup step. Uh, you're still going to use, for example, spades if you'd like in both steps. Um, however, you know you're not going to. Um, need to identify viruses with microbial data set. You can identify viruses in the microbial data set, but um, you don't necessarily not going to use, for example, virus order. Um, and so um, the two sets are very, very similar, but like I said, very different. And yes, actually, I'm going to go through the chat here. Um, because this is you working on your data, we're gonna, I'm just going to kind of go through this very slowly. Um, it hopefully will afford you enough time to actually ask questions. I will be able to address questions directly. Um, if there are any problems, we can kind of face them together. Um, I don't know if we have enough time to like go through every single step for every single pipeline. Unfortunately, there's like never enough time. Um, if you'd like to uh, sign up for the OSU, uh, the Vromix workshop, um, that is mostly yearly. Um, I know uh, COVID kind of put a kink in things. So um, this end-to-end -end processing, not to belabor the point, we go through the exact same steps process for all of them. Um, we download the data. Um, here I have um, the links, every link that you would need on OSC. Um, a couple of them you might have to actually read so that you can't just copy and paste blindly. Most of this you could copy and paste um, and make a, uh, a bash script to submit on OSC and they mostly should work. However, the file paths are gonna have to be specific to your particular data set. Um, and so if you copy and paste this and it's not working, um, it's probably a line in the script that you're going to have to look through and identify. Um, you can always email me um, or ask a question in the chat. Um, in fact, I can look through here. Ah, yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, but yeah, you should be able to mostly copy and paste this. Oh. So the steps are almost identical between each of them. So you'll download the data to the read QC. Um, in this guide, I actually use Trimomatic and um, the BB tools. 
to process them. Um, I do read quality visualization with FAFS QC. Absolutely everything we do on Cyverse and KBase um, is available um, on OSC. In fact, I generally test my apps locally, then I move them to OSC, make sure they're working for the lab, and then push them so that the eMicro community um, and any you know, viral ecology researchers can use them. And then I actually take those apps, put them on Cyverse, because it's much easier to put things on Cyverse first. Um, and then once they're actually working quite well and I feel confident in them, then they go on to uh, KBase. And so, um, and so, yeah, that's basically kind of the process. So read quality control, QC, assembly. Um, to point out, I do have some flags in here. Um, this is using the OSC's new submission system. Um, and so for some of these I use like partition for huge mem. You don't necessarily have to use um, huge mem for a lot of these. You may or may not need to. Um, and this data set is probably, it's not, it doesn't require huge mem level memory, but I did so um, here simply because it was faster and easier. Um, and I waited a little less time on the queue. Don't let OSC know. Um, you will be charged more for using the huge mem queue. Actually, that's probably a better deterrent um, than the normal queues. I I'm not sure what the uh, cost is for OSC, um, but keep in mind that if you are using huge mem, um, it's going to cost you more, I think, per CPU core hour than it would be for a normal one. Um, if someone has any other like, oh, no, that's not true. Um, definitely post it in the chat, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's how it's going to, how it's going to be. Um, let's see here. Yes. So running spades for at least in this example, I actually run um, mega hit as well. And I did have IDBUD on the microbial metagenome. You can also do that for micro um, for the viral one. Um, but uh, you don't necessarily need to um, go through there, identify viruses. Almost all the tools are available in the eMicro um, apps section. If they're not, just ping me and I can, like in two seconds, copy the um, singularity images um, over. And if you read the website, read the top of the page, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say singularity. Um, I also have the actual commands and some of the responses, responses, um, the um, outputs that get printed to the screen when running them. And um, just so that people will know what they should be expecting if they will go into verbatim copy and paste and process the exact same data set. Uh, I check quality, would check fee. Do, 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 do. Uh, prepare for vcontact and then run vcontact2. And I'm probably going to add a few more um, uh, blocks kind of processing steps at the end of this um, just to make it more complete. My goal is for people to come um, back, you know, week after week, month after month. Um, I will update this with more recent apps and versions. Uh, the reason I thought of this is because this version of vcontact2 is kind of out of date. Not that you're going to get bad results or anything. It's just that um, bug fixes and stuff like that people have um, identified. I try to you know push push updates to that. Um, I don't rerun the entire pipeline every single time there's a single app update. Um, so you will see kind of different versions between the different um, areas. Um, and where was it going with that? Oh yeah, so um, there might be some minor details, version changes between the various processing pipelines, but don't fret. Um, they should all they should all work, I guess I should say. Um, and if um, you find that you know there's uh, if you go to Cyverse and then there's an older version of eContact two on there. Um, it's probably okay, 
to use that. Um, at generally at this point, a tool like vContact2 or Spades um, or Viewsorter1 have been around um, long enough so that there shouldn't be any concern for you to run your particular data set um, and suddenly, you know, all of your data is meaningless, you know, when the next version comes out. Um, so yes, I will circle on this, uh, circle back to this at the very end. Let's see, at the very end, I know there's a lot um, to go over. I know it can be kind of overwhelming, but um, that's, that's why we have it here. That's why these webinars are being recorded. Um, you can always go through slowly, kind of, you know, take it all in, um, copy and paste, you know, these lines. You should be able to copy and paste some of these. Um, for example, this, this directory people aren't going to have access to. Um, I just use that for the purpose of this. You should be able to just start with your own project directory, go to OSC, log in. Everything we uh, Sharif talked about week, week two now, log in. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, create your own directory. We could actually do that right here, but we don't have as much time as I'd like. Um, you can actually type in module load singularity um, and this SRA toolkit. Um, this is singularity container. If you'd actually use the singularity run SRA toolkit, append, it's what actually I say right here, prepend this for each singularity container, because if you go to, in fact, um, let's go right here. This is a hands-on thing. So um, I actually have a, uh, I've added this to my configuration on my Mac so that I don't have to type in uh, username, password, and all of that stuff every single time. Um, but here's my, home directory on OSC, make directory, project, uh, project directory, or something like that. Make directory. Um, now I can cd into the project directory. Sharif, I think, showed this as well. Um, and then module load singularity. You can, I just quickly tabbed um, to autocomplete. That doesn't always work, but I love to use autocomplete to kind of tell me, um, am I crazy? Because generally uh, on uh, Unix, Nix based systems, if you uh, tab and tab complete, it will uh, complete tab uh, paths for you um, or other um, values that are kind of in your path. So like program names and stuff like that. So if you keep on pressing tab and it's not completing, like um, if I put, instead of singularity, I put S1. Yes, and I keep on, pre I guess you can't hear me uh, pressing tab. Um, it doesn't autocomplete because clearly it's not finding singularity as either it's a value in my path or a file in the current directory. So module load singularity. Um, and then if I would do to like singularity, Singularity, come on, let's see, thank you. Singularity run, and then I copy and pasted here. Um, I've had a lot of users, um, some users complained that they kept on having to copy and paste this every single time. Um, and so I took them out and then uh, I had to deal with users complaining that I took them out and they wanted me to put them in. And so now you have a guy that actually has both of them. And so. Uh, we have to switch between both uh, that. So SRA toolkit, um, FAFSQ dump. Yes. Um, what I'm doing is, uh, don't try this at home, but hopefully, okay. Yeah, some pro warnings. If something warn is a warning, um, uh, it can be safely ignored. If it's an error, it's not going to run. Um, so here we have, I'm actually logged into a login node. OSC doesn't like people doing this. Um, of course, now this is going to be safe for forever. Um, I'm going to cancel out of this job. Um, but as you can see, I am you know, able to do that exactly um, as I've copy and pasted here. Um, I'm actually downloading the actual data set 
Um, you can do this, do this in a job. Um, I probably should make a job file for this. I think I didn't do this initially. And then quickly the next step, I'm like, oh, I need to make sure this is in a job file. And so I continue using job files. Um, okay, so yes, long story short, you can copy and paste most of this code. You can log on to OSC um, and run this. You don't have to be, you know, listening here, um, hearing me blab about all of this. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that there's a lot of different resources available. Um, most users here, you're, you signed up, you were on some OSU mailing list, you, you know, got an email for this, or you heard this from a colleague. Most people are probably going to be using OSC to process their data sets. Um, um, but if you don't want to use OSC or you, you know, you have your free thousand dollars, I think that most, most projects are entitled to, and you want to um, use the free, as in beer, um, resources of Cyverse and Kbase, you are free to do so. And you can mix and match once you kind of get the hang of things to process your own data sets. You could um, do all your pre-processing on OSC and you don't want to, um, you know, spend, you know, five, 10, 50 bucks, a hundred bucks to assemble the data on OSC. You could upload that to uh, Cybers or Kbase, run spades on their infrastructures, and then download that data um, back onto OSC to do other, you know, easier processing steps. And I know a lot of people that do that um, simply because um, you could spend actual money on, on OSC, on the huge memory, like the one, two, three terabyte nodes that um, OSC has, or you could use the one, two, or three terabyte nodes that uh, Cybers has made available to the, uh, through TAC, the Texas Advanced Computing Center. Yes, I think it's center. Okay, so yes. We will minimize that in case we need to do anything else. And I've got a lot of tabs open. Okay. Um, so let's actually start at Kbase. Um, I thought about having a... Oh, excellent. Sharif, awesome as always. Um, okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, so right now we're on the narrative Kbase narrative 75, 8, 11. Um, if you've navigated through the web links or whatever, um, we can go through this whole process. Um, I like to use Kbase as kind of the first initial guide. Um, Kbase, yes, Kbase. Um, simply because I can have like lots more pretty pictures in the, you know, in the narrative than I can in the discovery environment. Um, I will still be using the older discovery environment um, just because it's more familiar to me. Um, I will be, you know, very slowly updating with the new uh, user interface, the discovery environment 2.0 that I talked about last week, um, mainly because um, as new users are coming on, I'd want them to be um, more familiar. So it's going to kind of favor the new users, the newer people coming on. Um, but you know, the steps are exactly the same. It's just kind of retooling your brain to not think in terms of files and folders, but like um, apps and sliders and, you know, a website basically. So the first step um, in the narrative, this introduction is basically, you know, introducing or downloading from the SRA using the Global Ocean Environment data set, um, GOV, um, a little bit of background. You'll notice that these are, um, the, I use basically the same um, kind of screenshots, underlying images um, for this webinar series as I did on Kbase. If you um, don't want to hear me blab for the next, you know, 10, 15 minutes about Kbase, you can actually go to kbase.us slash learn. Um, I can probably copy and paste that. 
um, or you can just, you know, kbase.us slash learn, L-E-A-R-N. Um, scroll all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, webinars, 2020. Hopefully I don't go too fast for anyone. Um, viral tools in Keybase. So I've actually already taken, uh, I don't know how long the introduction was, but um, if I click here, it will take you to YouTube where I've got like an hour and a half or so webinar dedicated to this narrative. So I go through in detail um, every single step, I explain every single step. Um, and if it, you know, it takes an hour and a half just to discuss something that I've already done. Um, you can imagine how long it would take to kind of do this um, from scratch. But once people get used to kind of this, um, this processing, it becomes, it comes very second nature. Um, if you'd like one awesome thing with KBase, and this is actually now I've got the time to kind of tell you this. Um, you can click on this and you can either share or you can actually um, copy this narrative. And in fact, when you open this narrative, um, you have the ability to make edits to it. And when you do, um, in fact, new something, you know, um, blah, 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 blah. Um, you can actually save this and um, because I actually own this narrative, I think it actually might make some changes. Um, I don't think it will be pushed to public. I'm pretty sure it won't be pushed to public. Um, and, you know, you can um, make these changes and you can upload your own data. So, for example, um, you don't like that. Sorry, I'm going to scroll back up. You don't like me using Metaspades. Um, we can go through and um, I can click on other assemblers. Um, we have mega hit, don't we? Yes. Okay. Um, you can click and use the paradigm libraries that I provided here. Like when you open this narrative, you have access to all of the underlying data. So you don't like spades and you're like, no, I'm going to use mega hit. You can do that. You can do that right here. Um, I don't have clearly a guide to do that for mega hit right here, but um, you could go to the end-to-end -end processing that we've done here. Let me Google, Google uh, mega hit, and um, you can mix and match between the two of them. For example, the camos that I chose in mega hit, and of course, read read this so you understand what's going on. Um, you can take that camo list, go back and copy and paste that. Um, uh, cameras, okay. So, blah, 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 blah. so I use these uh, multiple cameras, 21, 41, 61. Um, those are ones that we've kind of um, used in the lab um, for the cameras. Um, those other cameras that we have selections, I think, um, 21, 33, 55, um, we probably should use with this mega hit run. Um, but you can um, add a list of your camers, you know, 21, 33, 55, and then we could actually run. Like if I clicked run right now, I don't want to, because um, I don't want to have to burden KBase with me running lots of different data sets, but you can do that. Um, so you can change whatever you'd like in this. Um, you can delete cells, you can add cells, whatever. Um, all the data sets are here and available, so you can do whatever it is that you want to do on each of these um, on this data. Um, or if you'd like, you can upload, so you can add your own data sets. You can go to RefSeq, you can go to, um, um, you can import, um, you can upload with uh, Globus, as I was mentioning last week. You can actually have a specific HT, uh, HTTP or FTP. 
Uh, direct download links. Okay, so yeah, it's got to be something um, that you can anonymously or publicly grab from the internet um, that will download this. So I could, um, do I have anything that I know? I could pick something from NCBI, um, but I won't. Um, I guess this is one of those, you might have to trust me a little bit. If you type in a, you know, um, type in a valid link, this is clearly, this is not going to work. Don't try this. Um, run. It will um, run this, run this app, upload it into your data area, and then that will be available. Um, I think you can specify what it actually is, like an assembly or something like that. Um, and then you'll have access to it um, in your, your data panel. And then you can process every single step simply going through. So let's say you've just uploaded um, this ERR data set, right? Um, you've imported those or uploaded those, let's say, and now you want to assess the quality with um, FAFS QC. You can go to configure, you can reset it, um, clear the results, yes, um, yes. Okay, now I've cheated um, because it already knows kind of what I did before. I won't make any saves. In fact, if I saved, it's gonna save it under just me. It's not gonna save it as like part of the public narrative. Um, you know, and I can process it using some other data set, some other, you know, this ERR data set and then continue through and simply reset the actual pipeline that I've set out um, for everyone to use. Um, so this is a great opportunity if you want to repeat exactly what I did with another SRA data set, you can do that starting you know, at the upload point, or you can upload your own data set. Um, you can upload from your actual computer. Um, so you can go to your, you know, your finder, your Windows Explorer, you can drag that right here, um, upload it, and then, um, um, and then, you know, there'll be a paired end library available for you to process. And then, so after you do QC, and in fact, we can continue this. Um, so after you upload your data, um, in fact, there's just a little bit of background on like how to get data from the SRA, um, why we're doing this, um, I didn't kind of upload these pretty pictures to um, protocols because I feel like that's a little bit more background than the protocols that IO usually has. Um, I probably can do that because, you know, I guess they could say no, but um, just to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and then you assess read quality. This is the same steps that we've done before. Um, I have these kind of like little markup, markdown, um, just to explain to you, the user, uh, what we're doing and a little bit of why we're doing it. Um, so assess the quality. So I can press run right now with our, you know, brand new data set. And it would um, give you um, that kind of quality. Uh, yes, actually, uh, Sarah, yes. Uh, you can, um, you can do this. You can kind of mix and match. Um, one of the great things with KBase is that um, uh, it is a little bit harder to make mis I should say that. a little bit harder to um, accidentally use the wrong inputs um, because um, something each developer has to um, add in with their kind of app specifications and configurations are the kind of input data that app is expected to receive. So for example, if you've noticed here on the data panel, um, and if, sorry, I'm taking, I was gonna ex hopefully take you know, 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes for each um, one of these three protocols pipelines. Um, um, if you, after you've uploaded them, um, you have this little information paired end library, paired end library, um, it has, details um, and kind of like a what this what the identity of this um, identity um, what the kind I like to use kind the type 
of data that this is. And each app has its own input and output types. Um, so for example, FAFS QC, the develop, I didn't, I didn't make FAFS or well, integrate FAFS QC in KBase, someone else did. Um, I think it's the actual KBase devs. Um, they specified that only um, libraries, paired end and single end libraries could go into FAFS QC. So you, you physically cannot put contigs in here. You, you, you can't put um, genomes into FAFS QC. You can't make those kind of um, those forgetful or um, yeah, forgetful or uh, naive mistakes when you're typing something on the command line. You, you might type in, um, you know, ERR or something, something dot faster. And you thought, oh, wait, this is, you know, my, you thought it was your paired end library, but really those were your, your contigs file. Um, in KBase, you can't make that mistake. I'm sure you can, you can try to make that mistake. Um, you can try to force stuff. And in certain apps and tools, there is a little bit of um, fuzziness that can go on, but you don't necessarily um, need to, um, you know, to try hard in order to have that happen. Um, so you can select whatever paired end library you'd like. Um, you could run this. I'm not going to run it here exactly. Um, and then you'd get some, some output. In fact, I said, yeah. I would have to reload this whole thing, um, but you would have a result here, and that would be the result from FAFS QC. Um, clearly, um, uh, you would need to, um, yeah, to, to kind of see that by me resetting this, you kind of don't get to see what the output is. Um, but in fact, do I have it here? I don't have it on this one. Um, I should probably put more screenshots in this. Um, but you would see the kind of uh, results that actually showed, I think, on week two or three as well of FAFSQC, the kind of results um, and what the quality of your data actually looks like. Um, a little bit of explanation. Then we trim those reads. Um, you can look at the configuration and stuff that I set up. Do, 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 do. And one great thing is that uh, since KBase has all this information kind of embedded in the actual types, uh, file types, you can click on each of these particular pieces of data. Okay, excellent. Um, click on these particular pieces of data and get some basic statistics um, on each of them. Um, so that's a little bit nicer than if you're on OSC and you're like, I don't know what tool to use. Like, I, I can't remember what tool to use other than, you know, FAFSQC to kind of spit this data out. Um, but if I wanted to know the number of reads in this data set, yeah, sure, I could do something um, using Python or Perl or some of the Unix utilities to kind of figure out how many reads are in here or how many bases. Um, or, you know, KBase can just give you that information. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, that's right. So after you um, clean up your reads with something like Trimomatic, um, I always like to recheck them with FAFSQC especially if you noticed something um, off during the initial QC, um, during the initial kind of pass. Um, I think for data sets that I'm familiar with or like the environments that I'm working with, um, um, I already, I've already processed a bunch of them, um, like maybe during a time series or something like that. I'll skip the first, you know, FAFS QC or heck, I might even skip both of them um, if I'm pretty, you know, confident in the data. And then I'll just, trim them up. Um, and if I don't see anything out of ordinary with like in the, you know, Trimomatic or the BB uh, tools suite, um, then I'll just continue to process them as is. Um, so if it's like, hey, we trimmed out, um, you know, these 50,000 read pairs and I had, you know, 50, you know, 2,000 reads or something like that, um, then I'd be like, okay, most of the reads had adapters. They were mostly trimmed out. Um, I'm good to go. Um, but that kind of experience only comes with, you know, a lot of experience. If you're, a, you know, a new um, graduate student, um, if you're a postdoc who maybe, or even, you know, professor 
full professor um, who's um, doing this for the first time, I would recommend just fast QCing both of them, both before you've QC'd them and after, just so that you can see what went on and how much data you've cleaned up. Um, FAFSA QC report, we've mentioned this before um, last week. Um, in fact, we've mentioned a couple times too. Um, this is, you know, good quality, keep it in the green. It can be in the, the orange. Um, um, and if you don't see that, then go over your parameters. Maybe you didn't choose the right adapter file. Maybe you need to upload your own adapter file um, and trim them um, because maybe you're a sequencing facility or you use a specific adapter adapters during your, um, maybe your amplification step. Um, and so you would need to, you would know if you used custom adapters, if you need to trim with custom adapters. Um, Fabs QC, yes, you can download that. Um, I use Metaspades to assemble. Um, and in fact, um, yeah, you could use Megahit or IDBAUD. Um, in fact, one great thing is that you can put links in this. And so if you remember from just last week, um, I discussed uh, Meta Spades, Mega Hit, and IDBUD. If you click on this link, it will take you to the actual website so you can actually read. And I'm not just like saying, you know, trust me. I'm saying, you know, trust this peer reviewed article um, that has the information that you would need in order to have confidence um, that when I make this somewhat, you know, um, fuzzy statement um, that you can go back and kind of verify or validate yourself or, you know, question why I said that. So we assemble them. Um, something that KBase does that others don't um, is that it actually runs Quast um, on that, that assembly um, um, itself. So you can actually kind of browse this, gives you some basic statistics. We want something, you know, between the 1,000 and 10,000. We've got more than 1,800 contexts to deal with. Um, that's good, but we definitely won't have 18,000. Um, okay, so go here, uh, in 50s, 2,700, that's okay. Um, anyway, uh, so we clean up the contexts. We use VIA sorter. Like I said, I'm just going through this pipeline. Um, if people have questions in the chat, uh, yes, awesome. people feel free to ask questions all day long. Um, so we filter the contigs um, by specific length. Um, I choose um, 5K just simply because as we discussed, um, say, what are the parameters you choose for an assembly? Uh, excellent question. Um, let's go back up. Do, 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 do. Um, I do have the parameters in every single protocol. Um, uh, so you can see that I'll go and view the configuration um, here just so that you can have, have this for posterity. Just like the mega hit when I added all these additional camera sizes, um, the only parameters that I changed um, right here, so I chose the reads paired end library um, I had a minimum contig length of 2 KB. Okay, so I guess that 18,000 is more than just the one to two. Um, I chose 21, 33, 55, 77, 99, and 127. Um, depending on how you've downloaded or compiled spades on your local machine or the infrastructure, you might not get that 127. Um, that is okay. Um, 10 years ago, when we were first figuring out, we're still figuring out viral metagenomics, um, we had no idea what cameras to use. And in fact, there were tools available to help you figure out which camera sizes were available. Um, but as people continued to publish in the space and as, um, let's say, as uh, the resources became available to run multiple cameras, um, we just started to add more. And um, for a number of years, it was pretty much 21, 33, and 55. 
Um, and I used that for, for a very long time until I started to see people um, run with 77 and 99. And then um, people in my own lab were using just all six of these. And I was like, what, what, do you, what do you need to use all six of them? And they're like, well, it doesn't really hurt the assembly. Um, and then I looked and I'm like, well, actually it doesn't really hurt the assembly. Um, it's, it's the same or it gets a little bit better. Um, and the only um, limitation is that this will take a lot longer to run. So instead of three camera sizes, you're running six. Um, so hopefully your, um, uh, wherever you're running the assembler has the memory to do so. So like we talked about last week, if you're using Metaspades, and you know you run into wall time or timeouts or hey we don't have enough memory, then you might have to change some of your configuration or figure out um, running on the large mem or the huge mem on OSC if you have access to that. Um, so then we have to do a couple things. Um, this is actually specific to KBase. Um, it's kind of embedded like half an hour into the video. Um, KBase has its own little caveats because. Unlike Cyverse, where you have to have an app for absolutely every single step that you do, um, in KBase, you actually need to have the kind of connector tools. Um, so um, in KBase, uh, there's no great way to kind of, as I'll get to in the next steps, sometimes the, an output from one app doesn't have like an easy input into another app. Um, and so you have to kind of go through these hoops um, in order to transform your data from the output of one app into the input of another. And you sort of have to do this in Cyverse, um, but there are just so many apps and so many people using it. And there's just so many developers there that there's, there's probably already an app for you to do that. Um, and so you don't have to worry about that. Um, unlike with Kbase is that, um, since the infrastructure, the, the, the system itself is just so different. Um, there's, you know, there are fewer developers um, working on that. Um, and so they have all of the apps that you, that you need to do that, but you kind of have to um, know the apps that you need to use in order to do so. It's kind of a long winded way of saying, um, um, one, you have to know like, the specific apps. So you have so many apps to deal with. You have to know the specific apps. And then on Kbase, um, you need to know like um, within this smaller, you know, environment of apps, like what are the right specific right apps to get me to get this data transformation to this other one. And this apps kind of lets you kind of, um, you can go to the app section and categorize them, but you don't necessarily know what the inputs of the next apps are until you kind of open them and use them. So it's definitely a catch-22 or circular line of reasoning to figure out what you need. Um, how do you pick the best assembly only by context sizes? Um, so uh, that's a very good question. Um, and it might not matter which one you use. Um, and um, the PeerJ article that I that actually linked gives some notes on how to kind of select which one you might want to use. Um, and unfortunately, you might not know which one is better until you run both of them and compare the results. Um, so for for some for an example, um, um, Metaspades does a really good job with um, avoiding false positive circular contacts. So it doesn't like artificially kind of circularize or trim off maybe some of the ends um, that are used to circularize various viral genomes. Um, so if you have a particular data set or you're working with um, viral genomes that have, you know, circular closed um, ends, maybe you don't want to, um, to lose those. And so you would use metaspades instead. Alternatively, if you have no idea what you're using um, and you could have a background that has lots of different types um, and maybe they don't have as many, so maybe you're dealing with linear uh, viral genomes. 
then the benefit of spades is kind of a is a null point. And so you want you could use mega hit and get you know kind of the same results. Um, if I were to give the kind of like rules of thumb, um, really what you want is as many genomes into the larger bin, the lar as many large contexts as possible. And that's kind of like very general um, data. Um, but the most important thing is to have, you know, a lot of genomes that are five to 10 KB and larger. I would very, very crudely, um, if you run MetaHit and MetaSpades and you change up some of the parameters and the particular data set you have has, you know, 10,000 genomes, 10 KB and above. And the other one, I can't even remember which one I chose. Um, the other one has, you know, 5,000, has half as many um, that were, you know, five or 10 KB and above. I would choose the first one with 10 KB or more. However, um, the assembler might have had a hard time distinguishing between different variants of, you know, the 10,000. So when you run something like cluster genomes or you use DREP to dereplicate your genomes, those 10,000 contigs that were 10 KB and above really might be only 5,000. And so now MetaHit and Megadispades have the same amount of viral genomes, actual putative viral genomes. Um, and unfortunately, you wouldn't have known that at the initial assembly step. So um, one of the recommend the best recommendation is actually to run it using a couple different assemblers um, and then processing your data because um, if you, you, you might not know what you're looking at until you're actually looking at it. That's also very circular reasoning. Um, so I can't really offer super specific details like um, just look at the N50 or just look at, you know, uh, yeah, or the L50 or something like that. Um, it's, it's much harder to do than that. And you, sometimes you won't even know until you've run um, view sorter one or two or um, deep view finder on your data set. So um, yeah, that's very long winded explanation. Um, until you know how many even putative viral genomes you have. Um, so yeah, here we're going. Uh, filtering by the length. We're using Veer sorter here. Um, Veer sorter. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, objects results. Okay, so in Veer sorter, these are the kind of results that I skimmed over very very quickly. Um, this is actual results from um, a file that Veer sorter generates. It gives you a bit of specifics. Um, and in fact, categories, uh, categories. Category one is the highest confidence. Looks like we have 129 hand card front and all high confidence. View sorter described um, viral confidences, uh, high confidence by view sorter, yes. Um, two. Uh, three, we want to get rid of these threes. There's 101. Um, category three, which is the low co lowest confidence. Um, and then we go through this kind of, uh, we'll get, we're going to get rid of this in a second. Um, so this is the bit of cyberus maintenance that I was mentioning. Um, and I do describe this um, right here. So we have to modify these bins because I've put these into bins because there's no other way at the time to kind of do this. Um, extract those bins as assemblies. Um, and you wouldn't know, like if you were a first time user on KBase, you wouldn't know that you need to, you know, go from these bin context objects into assemblies um, and then into um, uh, run Proca, Proca on them. So, um, that's why I kind of have this information up there to kind of help guide the user along. And, you know, you could figure it out on your own. Um, you know, there's this is kind of like little Lego blocks and the Legos are only going to fit in a specific way. And in order for you to get to the Proca point, you'd have to have like an assembly or a genome. So you're like, okay, let's filter by 
you know, assemb assembly, you know, and what apps do you have that can do assembly stuff, can output assembly stuff, actually input, can output assembly stuff, right? And so you're like, oh, okay, I've got this, 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 this many tools that assembly output stuff. Um, and then you'd be like, okay, so from assemblies, what do I have here? I've got binned, binned genomes. Is there a tool that, you know, deals with as an input of binned contigs or something like that, bin contigs. Um, so you would eventually get to this point, um, but, you know, it might take time versus Cyverse, which is, <laughs> here's 10,000 tools. Um, figure out which, which one is going to get you from step point A to point B. But thankfully, you know, um, uh, there's probably a guide out there somewhere to help you do whatever it is you want to do in Cyverse, like, you know, this end-to-end -end processing. And so you're like, oh, I need to concatenate these two files. As what we'll do, we'll go to Cyverse and you type in concatenate and there's an app for that. So, um, so we go through this extraction, we annotate with um, Proca. Um, yes, annotate with Proca. That gets us some viral genomes. Does it matter the genetic code? Um, I prefer 11. Um, 11 is the default. Oh, oh, sorry, poor Carmen. I probably, um, oh, if Sharif doesn't get to your question, I'm sorry. I, th I think you were up there at the top and I just keep on reading the ones at the bottom. Uh, the genetic code doesn't matter. I would um, choose whatever genetic code you think your host system might have. Um, the, this particular data set, environmental um, microbiology, environmental virology, um, has a lot of you know, microbial, bacterial um, codes. So I would go with 11. Um, if you had more eukaryotic data sets, um, you could choose one, um, but these tools really, I should stress that, um, don't really handle, well, they can handle eukaryotic data as well. Like you would still do the same assembly, you would still trim the same, re trim using the same methodology. Um, view sorter isn't very good with eukaryotic genomes. It, it can identify them if they have viral hallmark genes and stuff like that, um, but it's the, by no means perfect. Um, I would match whatever it is um, your background is, but if you don't know, I'd just go with the default 11. That does, that's a pretty good general, um, yeah, use. Um, okay, so one thing that's really nice is all the visualizations that are in Cybers, Cybers, Kbase. Um, you can browse the features um, and each of the contigs. Um, and this is actually really nice because on OSC, you have, like, you can't do this. Like, you can do that. Like, you can browse these files individually. You could use less or more or one of those. You could, you know, cat it or open the file. Um, um, but you really don't have that same um, visual impact, I guess, as you do on Kbase. Um, so you can look through these features. And like in um, IMG, you could actually click on particular genes, um, it will give you translations, all these, these are really, really cool stuff. Um, I wish a lot of this kind of visual nature was around like, you know, a lot of years ago. Um, and, you know, this looks viral. This is just, just exactly what I was talking about before. And in fact, if you go to the webinar, I'm like super excited because um, I just picked like a random contig for the first time and it was like, the perfect virus. Um, it had like ha multiple hallmark genes, a lot of hypotheticals. It was all, you know, on one strand. Um, in fact, this is uh, also very similar. I just like randomly pick this. Um, I don't think this is the same contact though. I don't remember that node number. Um, oh, neck protein, GP13. So would clearly neck protein, neck protein, tail protein, GP15. Wow, these are pretty much viral hallmark. Marks, hypothetical protein. Um, I wish, you know, that we could actually go in here and actually do some, you could do, actually do real science, like legitimate real science here. Um, and we could analyze this particular protein, but we don't have time for that. And I'm taking way too long. Um, so then we go through and classify this. So 
the point of prodigal is to call open reading frames or to get genes, basically. And then we use vcontact2, um, which is, if you want to read about that, you can read about the original methodology um, or the newer vcontact2 that we're using here in this Nature Biotech paper. Um, and we basically convert all of those genomes with all of these proteins into a network. This probably does a much better job um, breaking down what vcontact is versus like last week. Um, and then we basically, the configuration for vcontact isn't um, that challenging. Um, most of the defaults for a lot of these tools, you can keep the same. Um, you don't, we don't need to show the advanced. Um, I show the advantage just because um, I have like one or two power users that keep on emailing me asking to um, provide all the additional advanced information because they do change them. Um, and it's actually easier to type it out. Um, that's a, yeah, it's much easier for me to type out like another 30 lines of code um, to enable all of this um, than it would be to kind of like edit the actual tool itself to kind of like expose that information to them. Um, so yeah, keep all the defaults for stuff like vcontact. Um, so, uh, and that should, you know, serve you well. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, okay, so sorry, I'm actually getting to get to the question because it's more hands-on. Uh, two questions, does Kbase have any deduplication tools? Uh, yes, it does. Um, that is a good question. I know it does. I know it does. Um, I don't know if it has DREP yet. It doesn't have DREP. Um, it, it does. I just can't remember. It's embedded in another tool. That's the problem. Um, but I will actually, <laughs> this actually came up during my uh, webinar, I think. Um, that's a good question. I don't think so. I don't think there's like a spec, there's not like a, it's a, what's the other one? Um, there's no DREP, um, there's no cluster genomes. Um, uh, crap, let's see, what was the other tool I could have used? Um, I used to use this all the time, CD hit. It's CD hit, no, it's mega hit. Um, there is, but it's embedded in another tool. So that's, yeah, got to fix that. Um, but I have sampled PCR-free raw reads for deduplication due to low diversity. Um, yes, yes, oh yes, that's definitely, yeah. If it had 80% de uh, duplication, then yes, this is definitely a, a sampling kind of issue. Um, Yes, um, there, if you do run the assembly, uh, BB Duke, BB Duke, yeah, on Kbase, um, BB tool, actually there's BB tools here. Yes, okay, thank you. Drawing is awesome. So there is BB tools here. Um, you could go through and um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is, um, yes. Uh, so this is kind of the embedded. Uh, I knew it, I knew they had that because I couldn't find it during my webinar. And then um, someone later said, hey, they got JGI's pipeline here. Um, so yeah, you could take your reads, your read library, ERR. Um, and then you could actually go through and um, remove, bam, duplicate reads. Um, you can remove reads for your human reads, dog reads, cat reads, mouse. Um, it is shocking how much um, eukaryotic DNA you find in a microbial exclusive viral uh, in a you know uh, environmental data set. You go you know ten thousand feet next to the ocean floor, um, and suddenly you've got lots of cat and human DNA, and you're like, hmm, where did that cat and human DNA come from? Um, so yes, thank, thanks. Um, you can go through and filter that. Um, you will get a cleaned up paired end library. Um, in fact, you know, maybe when I do this, um, 
pipeline again, I'll actually use the BB tools um, and give some love to, uh, to, to JGI. So yes, you could do that. Absolutely, excellent. Thank you for asking the question. Um, so after running vcontact, um, you get the results and you get the results in this nice little table. 212, we're taking a long time on KBase, I'm sorry. Um, lots of outputs. I'm not gonna handle the processing right now, um, but I do break down, and this is applicable to all of the data sets, all the uh, pipelines. Um, and I break down basically how to identify virus or the genomes of interest, um, how to, to kind of, you know, handle it, um, how to figure out um, how many uh, genera you might have. You can download these files yourself um, and process them using, you know, uh, numbers or Excel or whatever other um, tools you'd like to use. Um, and because we use an environmental data set that I do have some background in, um, and this is partially why I was also excited. We actually have pretty good hits to um, well-known and well-characterized um, ocean viruses or marine marine viruses. Um, so that was kind of kind of awesome to kind of find in this um, data set. And then also something I don't I should probably put in my protocols is basically more significant kind of background on the levels of classification that vcontact has. Um, and then I basically summarize and give some um, apps. So like the big thing here, um, and this is kind of like a longstanding goal that I just wanna flush out so that anyone, no matter their background can, um, can process a viral metagenome. Um, so basically we go from raw public reads. So this is the reads you would get from a sequencing center We've identified the viruses, um, we've QC'd them, um, and then we've classified them. Um, and um, there are a couple of things that we don't do in Cybers or in KBase that we do do in Cybers. Um, you know, pending you know funding and time and stuff. Like, because I I don't want to promise that I can put out lots of new apps for people even when they request them, just because there's only you know so many. Um, so many iVirus developers. Um, we can only put so many tools out there. You know, I feel like the community, um, if you're a developer and you want to put some apps out there, um, you know, contact me, contact KBase or Cyverus, um, and I'm sure um, you can get your tool or another viral tool out there. Okay, so this is basically the kind of the minimum working viral pipeline. That's what KBase is. Um, if we head over to Ah, processing viral metagenome using Cyverse, um, we go through the exact same process. Um, we download, so this is protocols.io. You can just probably Google processing viral metagenome and Google uh, go on protocols and do that. Um, we download the viral data using um, the FAFSQ dump. Uh, we quality control, in fact, let's click on that. Oh, did that pull me? Yeah, I did, okay. Um, so this uses the ocean sampling day. If you click on this, it will take you to the little, little website with all the information on how to get the reads, um, how to process the reads, how to you know handle background, all, all of that. Um, if you wanna use this, you have to have a Cybers account. Um, and in fact, I have Cybers open right here. Da -da -da. Um, most of the data, actually, I should correct myself, all of the data um, you will want. And it's described in this protocol um, is under iVirus example data. So if you're interested in Cybers, here's the time, you know, 216, I don't know how far we're into this. Um, most of the apps um, that we've integrated into Cyverse have example data associated with them. Um, for example, spades. I, I call spades, but really, generally, we're running meta spades. 
Um, we have the inputs for the spades output. So this is actually using the same ocean sampling day outputs that we talked about before. Um, and then we also have um, the output data, some of the output data that you should be um, expecting. We do that for many of the apps we have here. Um, I have a uh, young um, ecogenomics pipeline that I'm working on here to basically go from, and this is based on user feedback. Um, so we have all these different tools um, and the inputs and outputs, and that is really, really useful. But we had a lot of users um, asking if we could organize them in a better way. Um, and so this is actually something I'm actively working on, like in the past couple of days. Oh, it's only, it looks like the past couple of days, like I should say a week, week, two weeks. Um, but I've just only recently moved these over because I'm trying to codify, codify all of these. Um, but eventually, if you come back here, maybe next week or two weeks from now, um, you'll actually see the saying like uh, QC assembly, the various steps. And then you'll actually click on each of those steps. And for example, traumatic, um, um, it will have kind of the inputs and outputs on all of that. So this is always evolving. This is kind of something I like to do um, on the side to kind of just improve like the community outreach and resources um, that are available. Let's see, downloading. So we go through the exact same process. So like um, with Keybase, we were importing the reads using the their SRA download tool. Well, cough, cough, their SRA download tool is probably FAFSQ dump. Um, and so in Cyverse, I go through each of these steps, um, open FAFSQ dump, and just proofs in the pudding. Um, no, okay. Um, apps, type in, yes, one app, FAFSQ, FAFSQ, take a second. Just go down. I know. It's from everyone running stuff. Um, now there's multiple versions of FAFSQ dump. I think I chose this one uh, by Ken. Um, some of these might work. Um, it depends um, because as Cybers constantly updates their infrastructure, um, older versions of apps still um, stick around and then newer versions um, replace them. And so it can be hard at times to figure out which ones um, are the most recent. Um, for example, I know that the FAFSQ dump, this 010, this isn't the version of FAFSQ dump, which is insane. Um, this is probably the version of the actual app um, itself, not the version of FAFSQ dump that's being used. In Kbase, actually, I should point this out um, critically. Um, all these tools open. In Kbase, if you click on something, um, for example, for, v, uh, for vContact, the module version is 11.30. The app, the actual tool, the underlying vContact version itself, published by the developers is 919. So there's a very easy way to figure out um, what version of the integrated tool there is, like what version of like Kbase or Cyverse it is, and then what version of the actual underlying tool is. Yeah, that doesn't work as well. Um, some developers try to be a little kinder and they're like, you know, FAFSQ dump, 281 dash something else, but Cyverse kind of ties our hands in some ways that you can only have specific like numbering schemes. So it can be kind of challenging in order to like display that to the user. Um, what we downloaded? FASTQ dump, specify the accession, et cetera. Um, quality control with Trimomatic. So I can, I could probably like go through you know, all of this traumatic. In fact, that's probably what some of you would like me to do. Traumatic. It's going to take a while because uh, 
sure there's quite a few users on here. There's like, I don't know, there's, there must be like a hundred thousand plus users and I'm sure like thousands are active right now. So at the middle of the day, Eastern Standard Time, um, it's probably a lot of users running this. And that's why it's taking like 10 to 15 seconds to load up the app catalog. It's because there's a lot of people using this. Um, so click on Trumomatic. Oops, not that one, I guess. Um, inputs, browse. You can either use, um, oh, how convenient. Uh, you can use the read pair files that we have um, available for you, or you could use any data that you've already uploaded. Um, yes, the parameters, um, you can use the defaults in Cyverse um, and in KBase, I try to specify defaults so that you don't have to think. Um, and there's a, that's good and bad. You don't have to think so that you don't have to know like the specific, what KMR values do I need? Um, but on the other hand, it's, it allows you to blindly just press, you know, fill out the input and then press launch for everything. And if you know what you're doing, that's great. Um, it just speeds up your processing. But if you don't know what you're doing, um, then you, you don't know what you're doing. Um, and um, I would not like to see people blindly following research um, and these all these protocols and not knowing what they're doing. And in KBase, it's a lot easier to kind of describe and like guide people along than it is in Cyverse. Um, so for example, if I go to this, of course my, I just published this version um, not too long ago, um, but users, if you'd like, you can um, ask questions and stuff like that. Um, um, here on the protocols, and I will try to respond to you. I do not get to all of them because I get an awful lot of um, questions. Um, we're trying to make it a little bit easier, like get more people to kind of answer these questions. Um, but um, there's only so many, you know, so much time in the day, so many hands to help. Um, so I won't kind of belabor the point any more than I already have. Um, each one of these steps goes through many of the same um, uh, uh, steps um, that you'd go through just using Cyverse and the apps. Um, I do have somewhat up-to-date screenshots. Um, I do have under the example data, um, I tell you how to use each one of these apps, um, specifically what to copy and paste basically um, into each one of these um, windows that you open up. Um, oh, and here I have like Oh yeah, see, okay, there was a question and I replied. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so you can ask questions spe to specific steps. Uh, all of the parameters that you use. I think for this example, I actually use 21, 33, and 55. Um, I published this a number of years ago. Nothing has changed except for the, um, uh, the version of spades that is now available. Um, and that's really all that's probably going to change. Um, I'm slowly going through and updating each of these protocols um, as time allows, and there's never enough time. Um, so if you really will get confused or got tripped up on a particular step, um, just, just email me and I will do my best. I'll try to put it up there and do my best to kind of um, uh, get to that and update that. Um, uh, launching analysis. There's also the results for all of these. Um, and I should update some of these screenshots because these are really old. Um, I don't think spades I've updated in a while, but the next steps I have. Um, and so let's go back to do spades, clustering the virus genomes. That's only version two. Um, identifying using virus order. Um, and in fact, I want to give a, um, so yes, I go through the same process, via sorter. We've already seen this. This is like all the steps are exactly the same. Um, but this is what I was talking about, via sorter two. 
Yes. Okay. Um, so if you don't want to use my Veer sort of one, not mine, it's really Simon's. Uh, if you don't want to use the protocol for Veer sort of one that I have on protocols, um, you can use uh, Jurong's version uh, Veer sort of two using um, the terminal here. Um, or you can look through the SOP for using um, Veer Sorter 2 on Keybase. So he goes through um, in detail the parameters that you should be using for all of this. There's also an SOP um, actually published by quite a few people um, here. Um, so you actually have lots of users kind of working together um, to kind of you know, make this protocol really useful. And if we go to Cyverse, Oh, please be this word. Oops, I can't spell this word. Let's be sort of two. Come on. Ah, oh, this sort of two. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I knew it was there. I just like I didn't want it to like disappear suddenly. Um, so all of the parameters, optimization, and stuff like that um, that were in the SOP. Uh, you can go through and um, go through and check those check boxes. So you don't necessarily, I should probably cut that up longer. So you don't necessarily need to like follow these protocols verbatim. If there's another assembler out there that you want to use that's in Cyverse, go ahead, you know, find it, use it. Um, and if you have a problem, just email, email Cyverse first. Um, before you email to me, because one, I'm going to be a lot slower in responding. Um, um, and two, most of the issues that users will deal with are more quickly handled by cybers and more expertly handled in cybers. <laughs> um, so we identify using view sorter. We do the same kind of prodigal preparing data for v contact as we did in Kbase. Um, this one is just a few more steps. Um, and in fact, this one I just published um, yesterday um, because um, the version four, five that I had actually did was missing a step. And no one mentioned that there was missing a step until I redid this um, myself um, like last week. And I was like, wait, if I'm using the exact files that I uploaded, the user is not going to know to use this app. And so I went back, reran this app, um, took a screenshot, and then put that step kind of in there, um, just because you know I really don't want people to go through, especially with vContact, because you know it's been a long journey trying to get this to work, um, so that users don't have to type in like a hundred commands on the command line. Um, I really want to make it so that people don't have to. Um, figure anything out um, in kind of like a negative context. Like you have all these, you know, the, you know, you have all this information out there, but no one, like you're missing that one piece that every readme or every documentation or every website is missing. And I don't, I don't want that to be the case for this um, because I like everyone else am learning something new every day. And it's very frustrating when it's like, what, what did you do between step you know, one and two to get those two files. Like clearly if something, something was renamed um, and there's no description, it, you didn't say what you did. Um, and that can be very frustrating. And like, a, like everyone else, I'm a user um, and I find that frustrating as well. So I try to fix it so I can practice what I preach. Um, okay, so we've done, we've run, Okay, v contact. Yes. Um, so something I really like with um, KBase that I haven't been able to integrate, just don't have the time, can't promise it, is its visualization options. So I'm not going to go through, well, actually, could scroll through. Um, so if you sort of v contact 9.5, it is very much not 9.5 right now. Um, I think there's like 9.20 or 9.21 on Cyverse right now, maybe 919. Um, so 
um, just because the version of the app changes, if you go and you know search in Cyverse and the app version has changed, use use the more version uh, recent version. Um, okay. Um, there's a lot of steps involved on Cyverse just because I've I've learned my lesson on Cyverse and take brought it to Kbase so that everything is like in one step on Kbase, but it's still broken up into many steps on Cyverse. I do go through in more detail each of the parameters in, in this protocols thing um, and why you would choose each of those options, which some users do find useful. Um, I have got a lot of tips and tools, tricks um, here and then hidden on the side. Um, launch analysis, I go through each of the results. Um, and then um, something I do for here is that um, in, um, uh, because I wanted to uh, make sure that users could, uh, you know, could process the data outside of Cyverse. I didn't do this for Kbase. Um, I actually, you know, invite people to use Cytoscape to actually load up the files that were generated in vContact, um, process, go through the processing steps. You know, uh, you don't have to, uh, you know, have me just painfully do each of these. Um, you can actually get this uh, view in Cytoscape. And I think, Yes, I do do a little bit of cleanup. That's something else I need to do. Um, and um, you can actually import um, annotations from vContact into Cytoscape, which I show here. You can actually colorize them by the genus, predicted genus, um, by the VC, by their confidence level or whatnot. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you can do that. I would like to get this functionality in Kbase, but unfortunately, I just I just can't can't, can't promise that. Um, I would love to do that though. So something we didn't do in Kbase um, that we can do in Cyverse is actually map reads. Mm, map reads. Map reads. Okay, yeah, I double clicked. Uh, I should have just clicked once. So. Um, you can map reads using the tools that I mentioned last week. Um, so we're basically taking the ocean sampling day reads and mapping a couple different data sets onto um, some of the assemblies, uh, the assembly that we had just performed in an earlier step. Um, so we open this tool called Bowtie Batch. We select the inputs and um, we have all the inputs, as I've mentioned a number of times in the example data uh, folders. And then we go through um, and click, let's see, making sure there's no keyways. We go through, um, uh, you know, I've got what these should be called, where they are, and some tips, uh, describe the parameters. Uh, there's a lot of parameters here. Um, I feel like there's a whole guide um, to using this. There's actually another tool that I would actually like to move people towards. Um, it's just, um, I haven't yet um, integrated it, well, published it as like a production. It's in beta right now, um, so you could check it out, but um, it, it's not ready for prime time because I have a few more tweaks I'd like to add. Go through, there's a lot of steps here. Unfortunately, um, so you get a fir the first round of results from read mapping. So what this bowtie batch does, and I said this last week as well, um, is it takes a directory of reads and maps each of them sequentially against um, your particular reference um, file. And in this case, the reference file is um, is this a good sort of layout that accurately reflects, uh, reflects the viral network? Uh, yes, um, I actually use, well, I shouldn't say yes. Um, the force, any of the force directed layouts should work well. Um, the force directed um, force spring embedded layout force, it's the force directed um, 
spring embedded with edge weights. Um, yeah, uh, I could probably open this escape. Um, I will, as that's, as that's loading, I will, um, yes, I'm answering your question as soon as that finishes loading. Um, so with the read mapping, um, there's that first where you've mapped all the reads to your reference. Um, and you get these BAM files. Yes, that's fine. Um, and then there's this output file just to make sure because sometimes when users are running this, they run into errors. And the errors aren't necessarily the documentation's fault, they're not the program's fault, they're not really the user fault, but they're kind of a, like everyone shares a little bit of blame. Um, and the output files actually can help guide you to figure out like what was wrong. And I kind of describe like how um, you can use that to figure out what went wrong. Um, and then after you do that, you select all those BAM files, which is the kind of, um, these are basically SAM files that have been um, converted to a, like a, I think it's a binary format. Or well, it's at least it's a, yeah, it's a more compressed um, format. So I'm sure I'm so sure someone can uh, correct me. And then you go through that, and then you use read to ref mapper, which actually posts all those BAM files, and it figures out um, how many reads uh, mapped each particular genome. It has the various cutoff thresholds so that you can um, the um, uh, what's it called the line so that you can match the kind of UVIGS um, community consensus guidelines because if you want to publish these viral genomes or if you want to um, submit these viral genomes as you know true honest to goodness this was present at this particular site um, you would want to follow those guidelines okay so let's go back to Cytoscape close yeah I got an old Y layouts okay. Um, so the layout that I like to use um, is generally the edge weighted spring embedded layout, um, edge weighted spring embedded layout, um, using the edge weights as the yeah edge weighted yeah um, as the um, yeah use the edges as the weights yeah as the scores. Uh, the bio layout should also work as well. Any of the force directed ones uh, should be pretty good. Um, all those random ones like the grid, hierarchical, circular stacked, um, those can be kind of be fun. But um, if you want to have something that looks very similar to the one we've published in both of our, uh, the PureJ and the Nature Biotech and um, in a number of other papers that the conduct has been used in, um, the edge weighted spring embedded layout is the one you want to use. They will look very, very similar. Um, and the reason for that is because V contact is very, very consistent when it comes to rerunning the same kind of network. And because um, each V contact run uses a reference database made up of RefSeq, and RefSeq was in all the published, you know, all the literature, or at least for the V contact runs, they all used you know the RefSeq database. Um, any other runs of V contact should look very similar. And if you have lots of genomes, yeah, it might not look as you know the kind of like the I don't know the boomerang ish shape that people often see. But um, um, but they should look you know broadly um, very similar. Um, so for read to ref mapper, map that, um, parsing stuff out. Uh, yes, percent alignment. I go through all the details here, launch it, and then you get the suggested coverage table. And that looks kind of pretty under Cyverse, but you can actually um, look at the little PNG file. And um, this is actual real life, real life, for our SRA data that we processed you know, read mapped against their references. In fact, I think I include, um, I include uh, their, what's it called? Disorder. And I think I choose RefSeq genomes as well. Um, 
Yes, I chose RefSeq genomes because I wanted to ensure that I included um, an environmental virus that was found in many of the, the global oceans. And that's what we have right here. Um, so what's really incredible about this is that, you know, you always see those crazy um, pictures. I think I showed them last week. Um, probably could open up that. But um, with the, like the hundreds of samples and the, um, you know, the hundreds of uh, references and you kind of see kind of the global ocean and like where things are mapping and they're mapping in specific regions. It was that really uh, cool heat map with like the, the greens and the yellows and stuff. Um, that's, that's exactly what this is. Like the actual statistics are exactly the same. The only difference is that I've got two, four, six, eight, ten samples, and I have two, four, six, eight references that I have in this. Um, so um, you would get the same result if you would run a hundred data sets um, as that, you know, that that paper. They might not be perfect, perfectly identical, clearly, but um, they should look very, very similar. And if you don't want this PNG, this PNG, this image is not designed for publication, um, you can actually download all of these files from Cybers. Um, you'd, you'd download this adjusted coverage table um, and then open it in R, R and, um, or in Python or whatever you'd want in a visualization and then you know, visualize them using the techniques that you've learned. And then finally, Okay, so that's Cyverse. Um, the extra steps that we did that wasn't in KBase is clustering the viral genomes. I'm sorry I didn't talk about that. Running out of time, I wanted to go through the end-to-end um, -end, um, on OSC, and then um, the mapping the metagenomic reads. Now that's not all that's on here. Um, I am still trying to add more to this so that it actually encompasses everything that you can do on Cyverse. Um, but there's quite a few things you can do, quite a lot of different an analysis tools, like there's viral ecogenomics stuff, um, um, tools that aren't specific to viruses that you can still apply to viral data sets. And those are available on both KBase and Cyverse. Um, and so uh, just because, you know, you could, you know, spend days processing your data sets, it doesn't mean that this is the only thing you can do. And okay, so that's Cyverse. I'm sorry I didn't spend as much time in Cyverse as I wanted to. Um, I just really like using Keybase as like an example because of the pretty pictures and stuff like that. It's a little bit easier to, um, to digest. I shouldn't close everything in case there's any lingering questions. Um, as I said, the background details are available for everything. Um, we're doing the exact same overall process between all three pipelines. Um, if you really want super detailed stuff, you can go through uh, the K-Base Learn and then our metagenome. Okay, I did. Okay, um, so for like just the next five minutes, um, just to give some uh, attention towards the OSC users, which I'm sure all of you are like, oh God, I just spent an hour and a half, hour and 45, just listening to this guy. And he only now gets to OSC, which you know I'm using all the time. Um, so there's two things I should mention. And I remember that Sharif um, uh, did say something earlier. Uh, singularity, it's a kind of containerized system, uh, virtualization, piece of virtualization software. It's like a VMware or Docker. Um, it basically puts an entire operating system, all the dependencies and stuff like that into a single file. And um, a lot of the tools that we have here are containerized, which allows them to be run on any number of different systems. So I could take any tool. So let's go to the eMicro apps. Um, hopefully, eMicro apps ls minus um, list them. Uh, let's do human stuff. eMicro apps. 
there were a bunch, I should probably put a lot more in here. Um, and I can do, it'll take me like seconds to add a lot more. Um, all the tools that you heard about in Cyverse, all the tools that you heard about in Skybase are in this directory. Um, we have Wish, Viewsorter, like these are tools I haven't even talked about. Um, Wish helps you find um, virus host, um, uh, hosts, hosts to particular viruses. Um, if we have Viewsorter, different versions of Viewsorter, we have Spades. Um, we have Chime here because this is eMicro apps. Um, Trimomatic, Trinity, uh, if you want to assemble um, RNA stuff. Lots of versions of vContact 2. Um, and all of these tools have particular dependencies. And some of them, such as, um, let's see, I'm going to be, it's going to be hard pressed. I think IVA maybe. I'm not sure. Several of these tools, I'm sorry, I can't remember them. Several of these tools have like system wide dependencies that you need to install. And so um, I don't have, I'm not a root or an administrator on OSC, and OSC won't give me that power because, you know, I'm not an administrator on OSC. So what these containerized um, files, apps, tools let you do is you can put an entire operating system. Um, you can put your app, all the app dependencies, and all of the root or system privileges that you need inside that one file. And then you can run that file as just a regular user on you know, Cybers, which is what happens in the background, on OSC, at TAC, at many of the XSEED um, um, affiliated institutions, um, and it basically just allows us to run pretty much any tool anywhere um, under, you know, any condition. Um, and to make sure that people, users can use these tools on OSC and maybe even on their own local machines, you can use this on a Mac as well. Um, you can just copy these files, you know, give appropriate attribution to like the users and stuff like that. Um, users, uh, the original authors and stuff, you can run these tools anywhere. Um, so all of the eMicro apps or most of them are available in that directory. Um, all the steps that we did on, I've, I've said this a bunch of times, so I won't say it anymore. Um, go through all of this. I use Trumomatic and BB Duke in this particular example, um, basically because uh, I don't think I've got BB tools on Cyverse, but it is in Kbase. Um, this BB2 Duke, um, I use um, BB Duke. So yeah, there's um, a couple different aspects of uh, the BB tools that I use that is kind of all connected together in the same um, pipeline. Um, yeah, that JGI processing pipeline on Kbase. Um, but I just go through each one of these steps. Um, when I say defaults for the other KBase and Cybers, um, the ones that I've copied and that you can copy and paste here are the defaults. Um, uh, FAFS QC, um, I don't think there's really any defaults for that. Um, what you should see in the output directories. Um, assemblies, as I mentioned before here, um, I assemble using spades or actually meta spades. Um, uh, for anyone who's very interested or who actually is planning on doing this on OSC, um, definitely look at the, um, this job script, these header files, that the headers of these files. Um, I use Singularity mostly exclusively, but I also have, um, um, for the users of Maverick, um, because this is, you know, grown, grown from a Maverick website to more of a community. Um, I do have uh, modules that um, Maverick can load. And if you're part of Maverick, um, I guess, yeah, if you're part of Maverick, you can actually load these. Um, and so I actually have hundreds, hundreds, more than a hundred um, modules that you can load and run. Um, and so you just basically uncomment those and not use Singularity instead. Um, most of these 
should work. Of course, none of them are going to work because I don't have the um, project. Um, I'm going to leave it to you to you to put your own project in here. Um, um, and the reason I didn't include them is not because like I didn't want you to use my my project numbers or anything like that. Like you can't use them if you're not an authorized user, but um, just because when you try to copy and paste this and submit it, it's going to be like, hey, put your project here. And that at least forces people to do like one thing um, to um, in order to get their job to run. And they'd have to change that, that anyway, even if I did put my project there. Um, how to submit each one of these, um, how much resources they used. And in particular, something I want to point out between spades and mega hit. Um, I know someone asked this question earlier, question earlier. Um, is how you know you can tell the difference. And you might not actually have a choice because if you're trying to assemble a data set and you have three terabytes of memory and it needs six, um, you're not going to be able to assemble using spades unless you reduce the reads that you're putting in there or you use mega hit. Um, so for example, when we assembled this large data set, this you know, two, 10 gigabyte paired end files, um, it took about three hours and 17 minutes and 54 gigabytes. That's actually pretty low um, on the, the large memory node. So I requested a lot more resources than I needed. The large memory node gives us like I think it's like 700, oh, 744 gigabytes of memory. And I used um, 54. So clearly OSC is going to be knocking on my door anytime now. Um, but I have no idea how much this data set was going to take to get assembled. And so sometimes that first pass, just to figure out like roughly the ballpark value that I need. So the next time I request a job, um, Maybe I can request six hours using a normal node, which has like, I think 100, 160 gigabytes of memory, 148, something like that. I can't remember um, with whatever it is with 40, 40 cores. Um, so it might take a little bit longer because instead of 48 cores, you're using 40 cores, um, but you won't be wasting like almost 700 gigabytes of memory. Thankfully, I only ran this for three hours, um, so I probably didn't spend too much on that job. Um, and then I also ran this with mega hit just to show the difference. It took 41 minutes and 5.7 gigabytes. Like, I could run that on my local machine. Um, I don't have enough hard to space to store all these raw reads, but I could certainly at least, you know, assemble them on, data, on, on this uh, machine. Um, and then I go through identifying viruses using Virsorter 1. I will be putting Virsorter 2 on. Um, that is not like a, I really want to. It, it, it will be going on here. Um, and I will show the differences between the Virsorter 1 and Virsorter 2 results and how you can further process that. Something I didn't do in KBase or Cyverse is check V. Um, um, just because we haven't integrated it. It, is, it is a beta. I should have said that on Kbase. I think it's in beta in Kbase. The only reason I didn't show it on Kbase is just simply because it is in beta um, and it should work, but I didn't want to promise and then have people not, not use it. Um, I'm in, in a not work for them, sorry, not work for them. Um, yeah, and so actually I requested like 40, 40 cores for check fee. You don't, you don't need 40 cores. Um, I think I copy and pasted this. I was also bad um, from another job. You probably only need like four cores <laughs> at most because um, this took like eight seconds to run or something like that. Um, so you definitely don't need um, 40 cores. Um, something cool about this is that, oh, I should put, make this a table, my bad. Um, is that this is actually tab delimited right here. Um, I put in the Virsorter output um, and ran check V on that. And you can see that there's medium quality, low quality, low quality, low quality, high quality um, um, for many of these. And it actually gives them the MuVig quality. So this, as I mentioned last week, follows the 
um, the community guidelines recommendation. And um, if you wanted to publish these, you'd say, hey, I've got these via sorted contigs genomes, um, ran them through CheckV. This particular genome is high quality as defined by CheckV. Therefore, that's you know what that what we have. Um, so in the end, those 900 something genomes, um, which we should have gotten in KBase because they use the same data set. How many? How many do we have? Ah, oh, use different assemblers. That's right. Um, different assembler um, cutoffs. So there's going to be this. This is going to be different. Um, unfortunately, uh, view contact. Sorry, going through this quickly. Overview. Nope. Of course, I don't find you fast enough. Come on, Ben. Nine hundred and ninety-six. Okay, there's nine hundred ninety-six genomes total. Uh, it's going to be a little off. Sorry. Um, and in here we have eight hundred and ten. Um, even though it's the exact same data, they were assembled almost identical parameters, there is a difference. But the difference between those 8, 10, and 9, I just forgot, um, is the fact that I only included categories um, 1, 2, 4, and 5 for this. And in the other, in the K-based version, I actually have all the categories right there. So that includes 3 and 6. So the differences between those are a little bit probably assembly, but also um, between those three and six. So we have 800 low quality, 24 medium, 17 high quality, and 68 not determined. Um, those not determined are often um, viruses that don't have hallmark genes. Um, so that's category two, could be category two and um, five. Um, the high quality are probably the categories one and four because they've got a lot of hallmark genes. Medium quality could be still category one and two, they just aren't complete genomes. Um, and then the low quality could be anything else that's in category two that doesn't have hallmark or in five. Um, and then I won't go through too much of this because you just copy and paste this. Um, and running vcontact2 and um, preparing and running it. Um, the prepare, preparation is basically that prodigal that we did in KBase. Um, and then the, um, preparing the input file. I go through here, don't worry about it. Um, I probably need to add read mapping here as well, um, just because that's such an easy, low, low hanging fruit um, to run through. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add that. Sorry, I didn't have it uh, ready for today. I didn't think about it until actually just now. Um, I would like every, absolutely everything possible to go right here just because it's super easy for me to do. Um, I've accessed OSC so I can just copy and paste things and run them quickly. Um, KBase and Cybers take more time simply because you now it's three. Um, take more time because I actually have to integrate and build these apps and tools and they're not nearly as quick as me opening up a shell on OSC and pressing run. Um, there is two final things I wanted to mention. Um, oh, chat, sorry. Visual tools wouldn't be too terrible. Visualization tool in Python, Network X. Uh, actually, yes. Um, uh, yes, yes, okay. Um, dark message, sorry. Uh, singularity, yes, okay, cool. Those are most of the questions. Okay, and then finally, uh, where was I going with this? Ah, yes, PowerPoint, two things. Uh, one thing is that upcoming work, uh, so I'll be updating the protocols to include DRAMV, um, which I didn't talk about. Um, oh, DRAMV, yes, and Veer Matcher. Veer Matcher, um, a little too late now, um, but that will go on the, um, uh, the Maverick website, um, because some of these tools are apps and beta and stuff like that for KBase and Cybers, they won't be on there. I can't guarantee that, but they will be on the, um, the Maverick website. And then um, next week, next week, um, we'll have Dr. Ahmed Zaid um, talk about ecological statistics. Um, so definitely tune in for that. 
And for everyone still here, thank you so much for staying through for this whole process. Um, yeah, I, I hope um, that you were able to at least start processing your viral data sets, or at least will once you, you know, get home and start processing them manually. Um, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, just feel free to email me um, or, you know, the webinar staff for any questions you might have. Um, I will do what I can to get more apps and tools and protocols out there.